<laughs> All right, now let's talk to the renegade economist, Fred Harrison. Fred, welcome to the Kaiser Report. Hi, Max. Good to be with you today. Thanks for joining us on the Kaiser Report. Okay, let's, let me kick this off by asking you, in, two, in 1997, you predicted that a global housing bubble would ensue in 10 years. The global depression of 2010 would happen. How did you do that? Actually, I deal with what is considered to be forbidden knowledge in economics. I look at the most sensitive indicator in the whole of the economy, which is the land market. And from that, I can deduce the trends. Now, there's nothing magical about this. If you look at the history of uh, the Western European economy, we can see trends that repeat themselves every 18 years without fail. By looking at the land market, we can see exactly how the health of the economy is progressing. And from that information, I can date the main turning points in the business cycle. And that's how I did it back in 83, forecasting that 1992 would be the end of that cycle. And I did it in 1997 because it's simple arithmetic, frankly. I was able to predict the peak in the housing markets around the global economy, because now we're dealing with a global economy. And therefore, I was able to say that the bottom of the current 18-year cycle would be the coming year. Why is there such a constant boom and bust cycle? in our economies and is there a way to stop this cycle the boom bust cycle is programmed into the politics of well what used to be a uh, monarchical system it became the aristocracy's economy now it's a d democratic one but the underlying factors are still the same the best gains are out of land not out of the stock market, not out of uh, other exotic instruments. Actually, over the business cycle, the highest capital gains are to be made from land. That's the secret. But the, the way that the market is structured at the present time, we definitely get a boom after about 15 years into the cycle, which means that there has to be a bust because debt is created in order to uh, exploit, over-exploit that market and uh, the economy has to come to a grinding halt. And it's happened every 18 years for the last two or 300 years. You argue that we should socialize land and privatize wages. What do you mean by this and what would it achieve? Well, actually, Max, I've already referred to this, haven't I? Uh, the socialization is actually recovering for the public, the community, the value which we collectively create. And changing the taxes by abolishing taxes on earnings, abolishing taxes on the profits we make from the investments out of our savings, means that we reprivatize the wealth that we create, we let people keep what they produce, and we collect to fund the public sector that shared revenue, which is crystallized in the land market as rental income. We use that to pay for public services. That's re-socializing what used to be the public revenue and privatizing people's private wages. The average Brit seems to really enjoy housing bubbles. Any politician trying to stop property speculation with, for example, tax policy would surely be booted out of office. So how would you convince the British people that there is an alternative? Yes, you see, now the British, uh, it's an Anglo-American phenomenon, actually. Uh, unlike the Germans, who do not view their homes as their castles, uh, and therefore they invest more in productive activity, uh, the Anglo-American culture is to view the home as the castle, uh, which is now our nest egg, our pension fund. And so, yes, it's a political problem. Uh, they found that 100 years ago, when the Liberal government actually did introduce a land value-based tax, but uh, the House of Lords simply rejected uh, any attempt at reform. And that culture of wanting to make money out of nothing, out of just occupying a bit of land, has seeded through into the democratic system so that we even get uh, shopkeepers now, people who work for wages uh, in um, shops, wanting portfolios of properties, buy-to-let properties, to make money out of nothing. And so it becomes a political problem to inform them that actually all of this is against their personal interests. And uh, yes, uh, there hasn't been the political strength, the moral courage of our statesmen, not for 100 years practically, to change that crooked, that corrupt system of distributing income. So how would you convince the British people that there is an alternative? 
I know that what I've suggested is pretty well impossible, but actually, when you think that uh, in the United States they would be collectively better off by hundreds of billions of dollars a year to share out among the population if they made this tax shift from uh, taxing wages to raising revenue from land, that becomes an incentive. Everybody becomes richer. In this country, over the years of Tony Blair's administration, Britain lost wealth and welfare equivalent to one year's national income. Now imagine how many hospitals and schools we could build, uh, how much higher wages could be if we had this tax reform. It takes moral courage by the stewards of our uh, system of government to explain this to the public, and I believe that they would listen and want to make the change. What would our economies look like today if we had land reform? Well, now you're asking about the future, aren't you, Max? If we want a sustainable system of economics, if we want to be able to compete on an equal footing with the Far East over the next business cycle, the only option is to shift taxes off wages and onto the rents of land. What would that mean? It would mean the uh, factory gate prices of products produced in Western Europe would become more affordable in the global markets. Without this tax shift, our goods will continue to be undercut by cheap labor produced goods in the Far East. Now, that's, this future is not a sustainable one. This is what the G20 economies have driven Europe and North America into, a, a situation of crisis where we will not be able to compete unless we change the cost structure. And the only way of achieving that is the tax shift that I've just explained to you. How well have governments responded to the crisis? And what should they have done differently? Governments have been abysmal in looking after the interests of the advanced countries. Uh, they've exposed Europe and North America to a Far Eastern economy that's actually going to gobble up most of us. Except for the German economy, it's my prediction that the hop much of the rest of Western Europe and large chunks of North America are going to be in the doldrums for the next 20 years. And that's because our governments have just tried to inflate us out of this uh, recession uh, by using the very mechanism that brought us here in the first place. Debt was the way we tried to maintain living standards, not by producing goods that are of any value, but by borrowing and spending. And that's exactly what governments are still doing, piling debt upon debt. They've socialized the private debts of the land speculators, pu putting the burden onto future taxpayers, and what, what does that mean for the rest of uh, the business cycle that begins this coming year? A European and uh, North American economy that is not fit for purpose. So I'm afraid that on, in terms of the scorecard, uh, governments in uh, the G20 economies have failed abysmally to take care of uh, their nations. Okay, final question. Fred Harrison, the renegade economist, you did predict a financial crisis. How do you see it? ending? Because of their failure to rebase their economies uh, on a uh, cost structure that's viable, uh, what should have been just a recession will turn into a depression. It is now going to be more or less 10 years of lost economic output. Just as in Japan, just in the 1990s, as in uh, Europe in the 1930s, and I can go further back uh, to similar examples, Ours will be a Western economy in the doldrums for about 10 years. There will be highlights, there will be money to be made by those who are shrewd enough to latch on to the forbidden knowledge which enable me to predict the trends. But for most people, it's going to be a, a decline in living standards and a lot of...